In today's video, I want to talk to you about keratosis pilaris. You will learn what it is, how do you get it, how do you treat it, and also what are the common mistakes that people with keratosis pilaris make that can actually make the condition worse. So I've experienced that before in skin of colour, so such as black skin or Asian skin. Can I transfer it to different parts of my body? And the answer is they work by speeding up and normalizing the weight. So for skin of color, I really prefer and recommend. Hello ladies, I'm Dr. Simi, former surgeon, current GP and cosmetic doctor. Welcome to my channel where we discuss all things skin and women's health. Keratosis pilaris is a common chronic dry skin condition and it affects the hair follicles. In this condition there is a buildup of dead skin cells because the skin cells just don't shed properly around the hair follicle which means that they hang around for longer and they block the pores and causes these little mounds or raised lumps. These bumps tend to be on areas of the skin where other people can see so on the outer surfaces of the upper arms, on the outer thighs, sometimes on the cheeks. It can also be on the buttocks and on the back. To touch, the skin will feel dry and it also feels bumpy. You're feeling a mixture of dead skin cells mixed with oil or sebum. It looks like you have permanent goosebumps. It's also known as chicken skin, which is a term that I really, really hate because who wants to be compared to a plucked chicken? No one. The way that it looks depends on the type of skin tone that you're looking at. So in fairer skin tones, it can look like red spots where the hair follicles are, or it can look like skin colored spots and then you can have a red kind of background to it. In skin of color, so such as black skin or Asian skin, you won't see any redness. You will just see the bumps, which can vary in color. They can be skin colored, they can be light brown, or they can be darker brown or black. And if there is irritation associated with it, because it can sometimes be itchy because it's dry, these bumps can become hyperpigmented. So you can actually have an area that looks like black spots. It's a really common condition and it tends to affect women more than men. And it also tends to be more common in children and in adolescents. As we get older, it gradually gets better by itself and can burn itself out. It also tends to be more common in people that suffer from eczema or just dry skin in general, and also in people that have a history of atopy. This is the way in medicine that we describe people who have a tendency to have allergies and suffer from things like hay fever. The condition seems to get better in the summer and then worse in the winter. And this could just be due to the fact that in the winter, we've got the central heating on in our environment and that encourages water to be evaporated from the skin. So this is known as transepidermal water loss. And this can then aggravate the condition. Now, although this condition is harmless and treatments for it are seen as cosmetic, it can actually cause a lot of emotional despair because Women will often want to hide their arms. It can affect your fashion choices. It can affect your self-esteem and just generally your life because you're thinking about this skin condition and worrying about what other people think of it and also investing a lot of time and effort in hiding it. As with a lot of chronic conditions, we don't know the exact cause, but we know that genetics plays a part. So if somebody in your family has it, then you are more likely to have it. And we think that it's inherited in an autosomal dominant way, which means if one or other of your parents have it, then there is a 50% chance that you would have it. I can hear some of you now saying, yeah, but I don't know anybody in my family that has it and I have it. That can happen as well because, you know, life doesn't present as the medical textbooks describe it to us. So that is possible as well. The other question that I get from patients about this is, is it contagious? You know, if I rub up on somebody's arm, can they catch it? Or what if I rub my arm on a different part of my body? Can I transfer it to different parts of my body? And the answer is no. You can't, you can't, it's not contagious. As doctors, how do we diagnose keratosis pilaris? There isn't really a special test. You diagnose it from the appearance. In some cases, a biopsy is required because there are other skin conditions that can look like keratosis pilaris that are different. So I want to move on now to treatment. How can we manage this condition? And although there's no cure, 
it can be managed. So I like to think of this in three different parts. So self-care, skin care, and then clinic care. Firstly, self-care. What can you do for yourself to improve this condition? Have lukewarm showers. So if you're somebody like me who absolutely wants to be roasted when they're in the shower, this will make the keratosis pilaris worse. And the reason is because having a hot shower really strips and melts away some of the natural oils that are on the skin and some of the natural waxes, which means that the skin is dry. So I've experienced that before where I've had a really hot shower. At the time, it feels amazing. Then you step out of the shower and you dry yourself and you just feel parched, really, really dry. So that's the reason why you get that. So anything that's gonna dry your skin out more or strip away the oils is going to make it worse. Because this condition is to do with an abnormality of the way that the skin cells are exfoliating, so they're not coming to the surface and falling off properly, they're hanging around for a lot longer, exfoliating also can help to make this condition better. You can exfoliate in two ways. You can go for the physical route or the chemical route. So with the physical route, you're using something to literally buff away the dead skin cells. So that could be, for example, a brush or washcloth or a pumice stone. There's just one thing that I want to add about physical exfoliation. And if you've watched some of my previous videos, you'll have heard me say this before. If you are a woman of color, physical exfoliation can irritate the skin enough to cause hyperpigmentation. So it's possible that you could find that in the areas where you've been rubbing to get the skin cells off, that this area can actually become more noticeable because then it becomes pigmented. So for skin of color, I really prefer and recommend a chemical exfoliation. And all this could mean is using a moisturizer that contains an alpha hydroxy acid, such as lactic acid, for example, which will gently exfoliate the skin cells. But lactic acid is also hydrating and it will really help with the symptoms of keratosis pilaris. Skin care. On this theme of dry skin conditions, they respond really well to, yes, you got it, moisturizing moisturizing can really help with this condition. A really good tip for this is to moisturize your skin when it's still damp. So when you step out of the shower, you will have water on the surface of your skin, but your stratum corneum, which is the topmost layer of your skin, will also be hydrated. It will have water within it. So the trick is to trap that water in your stratum corneum by moisturizing whilst your skin is damp. Beta hydroxy acid, love, oil. And remember that we're trying to clear out the follicle. So any acid that loves oil will be drawn inside the follicle. It will be able to kind of whip out the inside of that follicle, almost like a whirlwind, and clear it from the dead skin cells and from the sebum. So for example, CeraVe does a really good moisturizer that contains a 3% salicylic acid. And I would actually use this to help with keratosis pilaris. Retinoids, which are vitamin A derivative creams, can also improve keratosis pilaris. They work by speeding up and normalizing the way that the skin cells turn over and exfoliate. I would only really recommend this if you have small patches of skin affected, such as just the outer arms. And be careful because you shouldn't be using it in pregnancy or breastfeeding. And finally, professional care. I'm not saying that you need to have professional care to treat keratosis pilaris because you might find that with the self-care that I've described and the skincare routine, you're able to control the condition enough that you're happy with the results. But for some people, they might just want to go that one step further. So in-clinic options can include procedures such as microdermabrasion. I would be a little bit more weary for us black women using this particular form of physical exfoliation because of the risk of getting hyperpigmentation. Another option is to have a chemical peel, which can be quite helpful, especially if it contains a beta hydroxy acid such as salicylic acid. There are also laser treatments available. There's something called a pulse dye laser, which is a vascular laser. This can be helpful for women who have kind of that background redness associated with the keratosis pilaris. If you are going to go down the laser route, please make sure that you choose someone who is experienced and knowledgeable with using laser, especially if you are of a darker skin tone, so that's black skin, Asian skin, Hispanic, 
Middle Eastern skin because we form pigmentation if our skin is irritated. So we have to be really careful when we're using lasers. And I just want to finish by talking about some common mistakes that people with keratosis pilaris make that can inadvertently make the condition worse. So I talked about the first one already, which was having a hot shower. The other one is using a soap to wash. Now soap is a detergent and it can't discriminate between oil that you've picked up just from your day-to-day -day activities and from the environment and that's coming from your skin and also the natural and protective oils that make up your natural skin barrier. So that means it will leave your skin really dry and not having that protective layer of oil on the surface of the skin means it's much easier for water to evaporate from the surface of the skin. And this is called transepidermal water loss. So using a soap can actually aggravate keratosis pilaris. Instead, I would say you should opt for a gentle cleanser, one that's not gonna strip your skin of its natural oils, or a cleanser that is oil-based so that you're actually adding moisture back into the skin. If you have this condition, you are not alone, don't despair. It's chronic, but there are still lots of things that you can do to improve the appearance. It's more common than you think. I've seen figures that up to 30 to 40% of children have it, and most adolescents also have it. And it's also a condition that tends to burn itself out and tends to get better as we get older. I really hope that you found that video useful. If you know somebody that suffers from keratosis pilaris or somebody that you think would find this video valuable, please share it. And if you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more content like this. See you in the next video.